That's the end of the end of the end. I'm gonna burp and die. Oh god. <laughs> We're in the big city. We're in Jersey City. That's not the big city. That's the big, it's a big city. Is Any it? city that feels big, I'm calling the big city. And mall cops. Oh my god, are they really gonna stop right in front of our shot? How do I politely ask a mall cop to scoot? <laughs> Hi! We're shooting a quick intro. We're shooting at the Cheesecake Factory. Is it any way you can move your car up or just out of the frame for our shot? That's a negative. Okay. What are you doing? Okay, so we got in trouble with the mall cop, which honestly, if I was gonna get arrested on my final episode of Julia Tries by a mall cop, that sign seal delivered. We can end the episode. But this final episode does not wanna happen. It's like <laughs> dragging its feet being like, we aren't ending. Oh, and now we have more mall cops. All right, we have trains, we have mall cops, we have the rain coming. This is exactly how I pictured the finale of Julia Tries Everything going. We are back to where it all began, four, over four years ago. We are finally back to Cheesecake Factory. We're gonna be trying all the apps, all the burgers, pastas, cheesecake. Don't worry, loads of cheesecake, cocktails. Everything you can imagine is right in those, I was almost gonna say golden arches. <laughs> in that golden building. <laughs> I think we got the intro, we have to go. We've made it inside at the original table that we shot our very first episode of Julia Tries. I'm at the Cheesecake Factory, it's their 40th birthday. And I'm trying 40 of their most insane dishes. Cause it just felt right. Also, Chels loves being able to stand. I like sitting at a high table, it feels right. Okay, so our first episode ever at the Cheesecake Factory it was 11 minutes and 47 seconds, and we did 40 menu items in which every review was one word. Yep. Mm. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. There was a napkin count. I'm going to napkin three. We did a stretch break. The trick is to stretch the stomach. I digress. We didn't do any fun facts or history of this place, so there's gonna be loads of that in this episode. Because it is the last episode, I'm gonna make sure I can delay the ending for as long as possible. Oh, the only other thing I wanna say is, I when I woke up this morning getting ready, I told myself I'm only allowed to cry once. We'll have to use that strategically, the single tear. I'm not crying. Charles. I'm not crying, don't do it. <laughs> ready? One. And cocktail. Thank you. It's our final appetizer round. Yeah! My favorite round. Pot yeah. stickers, pot stickers, pot oh, stickers. stickers. <gasps> Found it. 250 menu items. Trying to find the description, let alone the name of the menu item on this, is going to take me some extra time. We have the chicken pot stickers. They are Asian dumplings pan fried in a classic trend. Classic tradition, sorry. Asian dumplings pan fried in the classic tradition served with soy ginger sesame sauce. You're a big dump girl, right? I am. Okay, I'm gonna hand you a fork just because yes. it feels like we have to start strong. Just by looks, this all the sesame in here, it just gorgeous. It really smells like a ponzu sauce where it's kind of extra citrusy. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna eat the whole thing, sorry. Gotta do that. I really have not met a dumpling I don't like. Mm -mm. Oh, oh. <gasps> <gasps> Ma'am. Oh no. Half of that went on the table. Oh gosh. The only thing I'm upset by is that there's only five pieces. <laughs> I think that's the rudest part of it. You just need double the amount. Up next, we have the ahi poke nachos. Crispy wontons covered with a Hawaiian style ahi tuna poke, avocado, green onion, chilies, sesame seeds, and a sriracha aioli. Every piece is really beautiful on here. Mmm. No. Spicy. I'm awake. It's like that first breath of fresh air that goes through your nose. You're like, like a really minty gum, but instead peppers. Super light, delicate, crispy crunch on here. And then those little peppers, they pack the perfect punch. I like it because they're cut really, really thin. They're almost cut thinner than I would say like a typical jalapeno is. So 
you get that really quick burn sensation, but it goes away super fast as well. Okay, open up. Okay. Baby mama, baby bird. Oh. <laughs> Was that the spiciest bite ever? Maybe. But <laughs> Okay, I think we need a drink. <laughs> we have the strawberry infused margarita. It is strawberry infused tequila with fresh sour and agave served on the rocks with this beautiful, beautiful, is that sugar do you think or salt or both? Salt, maybe, okay, salt. <laughs> this glass has like an aura about it. It wants to be seen and heard. Ooh. Very delicate strawberry, almost like just a whiff of strawberry, and mainly tequila. That is tequila forward, as we say in, in the reviews of the world. Do you need a little sip? I'm yeah. just having you try everything today. Okay. Chelsea tries everything. That's actually the next um, edition. Oh God, tequila. It is not even noon. <laughs> I'm just a tipsy, sweaty girl. Up next, we have the chicken taquitos. Those are crispy corn tortillas filled with grilled chicken, green chili, corn, onion, cilantro, and cheese. And we have avocado cream and a salsa verde. I'm really, really happy that they cut these into bite-sized pieces, essentially, instead of one honking thing that you're like having to cut up at the table. It kind of takes out some of that guesswork. Ooh, they are really filled. My favorite part about the appetizer round is that it's all about textures. You have like really crunchy things that are fried and then you have really creamy sauces. I just, God bless it. This salsa verde in here is like really bright and I'm loving the cilantro in here, the heat, but not too much heat. Like it's very tolerable heat. I wanna actually, can we go straight to the corn? I just wanna go to the corn. Up next we have the street corn, which is fire roasted corn ribs with Parmesan, chili lime mayo, and cilantro. We actually have a recipe on this at Delish for like a corn ribs thing. It's how you're like cutting the corn and you can kind of eat it like. Elote can never do me wrong. The creaminess with the corn, you have that little bit of parm. The lime is like necessary to break up all the creaminess and sweetness happening. I love this so much. And also it's an activity. If you had kids with you, you give them a little corn rib and they're kind of just like, you could do like a little corn rib eating competition at the table. Certainly not annoying to the rest of the people at the dinner table. We have the asparagus fries. Fresh asparagus lightly coated with crispy Parmesan breadcrumbs. I'm gonna say this is not lightly coated, but I'm not mad about it. Okay, the one thing about asparagus is that they're limp little guys. So the fact that this is laying straight, they've got a good little fry going on. Did it say what the sauce was? It does not. What do you think, like a zesty Southwest Sriracha aioli or something? Mm, mm, mm. That's lemony. Oh. It's citrusy. Ooh. It's like orange, lemon. Surprised and delighted. I personally am not a huge fan of asparagus. I, I only eat the tip and then I take the rest of the carcass and just toss it and I'm like, I don't even want to look at it. So the fact that I'm actually enjoying this and eating more than just the tip, <laughs> Ah. Says a lot, stop. <laughs> Says a lot. My favorite of our final appetizer round. Mm. That hits different, say. Like. Oh. oh. I think the pot stickers is too easy to say is my favorite. Like it's kind of a dead giveaway. So I'm gonna go with the poke nachos instead. This was super fun, delightful. I love that it has a spicy element to it. It has all the textures, all the flavors going on. But if you do wanna try something that's a little bit different, I really think the corn ribs are very, very fun. And it's just like a fun, different way of eating a vegetable that you're used to eating all the time. It's so much. <laughs> we are going to do a slow-mo for your burger, the big one. That's but we're gonna, but I wanna, me. but no. I wanna eat the mac and cheeseburger first. No. Also, by the way, uh -oh. these are glam burgers. They are not hamburgers. They are glam burgers. Hey, show me that, prove it. It says glam burgers. Oh. Right, Is, am I pointing at yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. We are eating the Smokehouse Barbecue Burger. It's smoked bacon, melted cheddar with crispy onion strings and a barbecue ranch sauce. Sounds phenomenal. It's time to let the light in you shine.
bite looks embarrassing. It looks like a little mouse took a nibble out of it. The first bite has this barbecue sauce that, it's this barbecue chip flavor that I used to have as a kid. So it's very reminiscent. So I was like, oh my God. The beef, extremely fatty. Like if they told me they were using 80% you know, the fat ratio, like if this was 20% fat in here, I would believe them. That is so decadent, so rich. Also, they toast and butter that bun. If you toast and butter that bun, so it's really soft on one side and then toasted and crunchy on the other, I'm gonna give you almost automatically a 10 out of 10. We have a raspberry lemon drop, which is raspberry infused vodka, fresh lemon, and then a sugared rim. Very, very simple. I love drinks that are just simple like this. Lemon drops are one of my favorite drinks to order for people's birthdays. It does not matter if we've had far too many drinks already. I will always order a lemon drop for everyone at the bar. Sometimes by accident, the whole bar. ASMR? Do you think that's an enjoyable ASMR sound? <laughs> it's really delightful. Wait, can I do a fun fact as I wipe off my hand? Before we move on to another burger where Chelsea's gonna make me do slow-mo, I'm gonna do a fun fact. We're gonna go back all the way to Detroit in the 1940s. We're gonna meet Evelyn Overton. Evelyn was looking through her local newspaper and she saw a recipe for a cheesecake. She's like, hmm, I wanna try making that cheesecake. She then started riffing off of it, kind of developing her own style from this newspaper. And her kids and her husband all were saying how amazing it is. So she then started kind of selling it to local businesses and people were really, really liking it, like liking it a lot. So Evelyn was doing amazing, had a business, was being a boss She then realized, I have two kids, I need to help raise them. Where was the husband? We're not sure. So she took care, raised the kids. Then once the kids were old enough to like feed themselves, walk themselves, whatever kids, you know, she then was able to start starting the bakery again in her basement in Detroit. And she started making cheesecakes for all the local restaurants. She was like, you know, this is working, but it's not really what I want. Her son went to California. He encouraged his parents, Evelyn and Oscar, in 1972 to move all the way to California. And he was like, look, this is a real business opportunity. We should be selling cheesecakes to everyone. We should have a cheesecake store. AKA Cheesecake Factory Bakery. Thanks to her son giving her that confidence to start this, she started making her cheesecakes and they opened their first Cheesecake Factory Bakery in California. So the first one that they started was in 1978 in Beverly Hills. And that was with David Overton, her son, and then Evelyn Overton, who was the mother, who was like the matriarch of the cheesecake. I have more of this fun fact, but you're gonna have to wait until later for me to tell you the rest. It's gonna be fun because as I get drunker, the, the history lesson of Cheesecake Factory is gonna get way more absurd. We have the macaroni and cheese burger. It's charbroiled, topped with creamy fried macaroni and cheese balls, cheddar cheese sauce, with some lettuce, tomatoes, red onions, pickles on the side. If you've never had their macaroni and cheese balls here, they are incredible. I believe, yes, we did try them in the original episode. My body is telling me to eat the entire thing. Hell yeah. So this is their riff of the macaroni and cheese balls into a burger, which I can actually, I bet this is better than the macaroni and cheese balls. It's our time to save the day. We're still going. Who knew Cheesecake Factory's burgers were bomb? Everyone knew that. They did? Mm-hmm. Oh. I was like, well known. I feel Their like burgers I, are amazing here. I only ever get the pasta. <laughs> I have to stop eating it because there's so much other good food, but holy shit, Chelsea. There's a half for you right here. You're gonna love it. It reminds me of like seeing my best friend that I haven't seen in for, for years, and then you see each other and there's like this warm, comforting hug. There's like melodies and harmonies and you're, I'm not making sense anymore. It just tastes like a really, it tastes like an old best friend. <laughs> not that. It tastes like the feeling of being with your old best friend. Not that your friend is old. <laughs> I'm wearing the same pants that I wore from the very first episode. These are the exact same pants from the first day that we ever shot. Little do they know, I used to do food eating competitions in college. And I got first place in all of them. Okay, we're gonna move on. Oh my god! 
Yeah, this one's especially heavy. We have the French dip cheeseburger, which when you look at it, you're like, is that a cheeseburger? It looks more like a, like a sandwich or a sub of some sort, but we're gonna, we're gonna go with it. It's a charbroiled cheeseburger served on a toasted brioche roll with grilled onions, sriracha mayo, and an au jus for dipping. Imagine just like, give me a few more lemon drops and I might. Oh, this is extremely rich. The best example of this for me is when I have butter um, popcorn from the movie theaters and how it really coats your whole stomach. And you're like, I think I'm made of mainly butter now. That's how this burger is. I feel like I'm mainly going to be made of French dip cheeseburger after I eat this. I can actually feel my stomach being coated, like in a rubber little coating of this cheeseburger. <laughs> oh, ooh, Lord. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay. Oh my God. It's fine. Okay. I'm not crying. You're crying. I'm crying. Wait, are you really? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna cry. I'm so sad. Um, okay. Not yet. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> okay. Up next, we have the bee sting flatbread. Italian sausage, pepperoni, bacon, and Calabrian chilies with mozzarella, parmesan, and honey. She is beautiful. The cheese pull that we got out of this thing is one for the books. Ooh. This is a juicy flatbread. A lot of the flatbreads we get are super, super thin, like paper thin almost. And you're getting like one piece of pepperoni per bite one piece of shrimp, whatever it is. I feel like Cheesecake Factory could have easily done that, but they really made it their own and it is filled with flavor. It's like robust and just like poppy and fruity, but then it has like the meatiness going on. Wow, this has made this round way harder. I'll take the French dip out of the running, but between these burgers and this, if you don't get the mac and cheese bites as an app, you need to do it as a burger. You probably will want to split it between two people because it is going to be heavy and you are going to feel like you need to be rolled out of here. And if you can get this flatbread for the table, you will be extremely happy and very satisfied. And if you get it for yourself, I would say, oh, I wonder if you could like do both of these, like split it in half. Maybe that's what I recommend. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is the halfway point. Oh, stretch, that felt good. Up first, we have the bacon and avocado Benedict. It's poached eggs with crisp bacon, avocado, tomato, arugula, and it's covered with a Calabrian hollandaise on a grilled English muffin. That is a lot of things I just said. <laughs> First and foremost, I should mention that this is a brunch menu item you can only get on Saturday and Sundays. So if you wanna try this, gotta come on the weekend. Oh dear, that is a messy bite. We're gonna work with it. The bacon is the highlight of this. It's candied oh. and crispy. I really don't even care about the rest of the meal. The bacon is what I want. I just want a side of the bacon and I can just have like an English muffin and I would be fine. The hollandaise itself, let me try, I guess, just the hollandaise. There's maybe like a very, like a whisper in a, the other room that you can hear. I think the color of it's really beautiful, but it's not screaming pepper necessarily. I don't know how we forgot to review this the first time we came here, because the orange chicken is a staple at the Cheesecake Factory. It's been around almost since the very beginning of them expanding their menu. It is deep fried pieces of chicken breast covered in a sweet and spicy orange sauce served with white rice and vegetables. They actually have little pieces of orange just, just, oh my God, I'm losing it. There are pieces of orange zest, orange, why do I want to say orange just, orange zest? Maybe it's the alcohol talking. This is horrible to say. I judge all orange chicken based off of Trader Joe's orange chicken, the frozen <laughs> orange chicken. This is reminding me of the Trader Joe's orange chicken, but way more fresh orange flavor, because it probably is fresh but it has this like really bright orange flavor happening in here, super candied. It has actually a decent amount of chicken on the pieces. Like you're not just getting fried, just fried bits. You're actually getting 
real chicken breast in there. Me, for me, I want the pieces that barely have any chicken breast, so I would like try to share this with someone who likes a lot of meat going on in their piece. Alcohol break. I feel like I've talked about this before, but when I was a kid, we used to always get these lava flows, which was a pina colada and strawberry daiquiri, daiquiri, which was a pina colada and strawberry daiquiri, but for kids, so non-alcoholic. And that's what I would have all the time on a vacation, and my parents would have the alcoholic one. This looks very similar to it. Kind of has that lava flow, like the red color in there. It's really, really beautiful. But this one's called a Georgia peach. This has vodka, peach liqueur, and peaches blended with a swirl of raspberry. And a little mint sprig on top. Oh, that's a sour peach ring candy with a little bit of like sour raspberry. It's delightful. And we're gonna continue with my fun fact because I haven't Fun fact slash history with Julia. Where did I leave off? Okay, I think I left off with Cheesecake Factory Bakery starting in Beverly Hills. So, to continue that, Evelyn's son, David, he decided Cheesecake Factory Bakery in Beverly Hills would start in 1978. And on the first day of opening, it was a hit. There was a line down the street. And the menu was actually, believe it or not, only one page and there were only 10 cheesecakes on the menu, which I know saying only 10 cheesecakes is kind of ridiculous to say out loud, but when you see how many cheesecakes I have on this menu, and you can actually look at all the cheesecakes up there, they have like a dessert, what's it called? A dessert bar, yeah. dessert cabinet. So basically, there really weren't that many restaurants at the time that focused on dessert, you know, like a big hefty dessert menu. A lot of the times it was really focused on appetizers and entrees, so this was a big deal. It took off, it was phenomenal. This was the other part that I found fascinating. Again, David, he was he was like the head honcho while his mom was like the matriarch of cheesecake. He was the one who was really getting into the marketing and making sure he was like the strategic one behind it all. Whenever he saw people going to other restaurants for different menu items, he would figure out what are those menu items and then he would say, okay, well we can add that to our menu. He just was like, anything they can do, we can do better. Anything that was getting popular they just would throw it on there. So he did this until they hit 250 menu items. And once they hit 250, he said, okay, we're gonna cap it there. <laughs> he was like, you don't need to go anywhere else. You can come here. You can come here for every meal. We have everything you need. And that's the end of my fun fact. I'm gonna drink while I review this one. Okay, up next is the Korean fried chicken. It's crispy chicken tossed with spicy Korean barbecue sauce served over steamed rice with avocado, kimchi, mushrooms, cilantro, and loads of sesame seeds. Oh, you want me to review it? I don't know what I was expecting when I heard Korean fried chicken, but no, I did know what I was expecting. I was expecting really big pieces, like an entire drumstick and then, you know, like a breast on the table. But this is probably way more, what's the right word? Logistically sound to make it in pieces like this. Mmm, mmm. The orange chicken, is your basic starter pack. This is the advanced pack. But the Korean fried chicken is extra crunchy, has that right amount of heat that you really, really want. But then you have your avocado and cucumber to really break it up if you need it to. It's like a real substantial meal to me, where the orange chicken I think is kind of like dipping your toes into the water. This is taking a deep end. And that's my review. She has lost her mind. We have the Parmesan herb crusted chicken. It is sauteed chicken breast coated with Parmesan garlic breadcrumbs and herbs. We have mashed potatoes and green beans, but we're not gonna talk about those. We're just gonna talk about the chicken. You know how I am. Chelsea and I were both discussing how much we love when the chicken is just like smashed to smithereens and just super thin like this. This sauce, it doesn't describe what the sauce is on here. I'm interested. Ooh, it's really salty. Oh. This tastes like a home cooked meal. And this sauce, it's like a brown gravy with extra butter. We have the hibachi steak. It is a hanger steak with shiitake mushrooms, onions, bean sprouts, wasabi mashed potatoes, and vegetables. We will try the mashed potatoes on this one because I'm very curious. So we have the hanger steak, which is known for being very juicy, very, very flavorful. That tastes exactly like hibachi steak. This tastes like a, a certain restaurant's food that they wouldn't allow us to shoot at. It might taste better than there. The same. Okay, we have to try these wasabi mashed potatoes. There's actual like light colored wasabi on here. 
I really enjoy wasabi mashed potatoes. Wow, it's kind of the perfect vehicle for something like uh, wasabi. You can get a pretty big chunk of wasabi in here. You think it's gonna be really spicy, but it's very mellowed out. That's fun. The hibachi steak is my favorite from this round. The steak is cooked exactly how it should be. It's extremely tender. The sesame on top, the, the sauce itself just all comes together. And then the wasabi mashed potatoes, it's not just like a throwaway side. They actually put thought into it and it makes sense for the plate and it's gonna keep your intrigue. Don't dare. Hmm. It was no, a quick yeah. yawn. That mac and cheese burger from two rounds ago is really hitting differently now. <laughs> Oopsies. We have the Louisiana chicken pasta. It's a Parmesan crusted chicken served over pasta with mushrooms, peppers, onions, and a spicy New Orleans sauce. One, two, three, four chicken patties going on in here. Very, very, Lightly breaded, I would say. Piece of mushroom, chicken bow tie. Here we go. I'm like waiting for the spice to hit. It's like an ever so, like a really spiky feather just slightly tickling you in the back of your throat, but not enough to where you can't keep eating. I would say it probably builds up a decent amount if you kept going and didn't take any breaks. But for me, this is actually very delightful and not as spicy as I was concerned about it being. We've been told there are three spicy things on this table, and this is the spiciest. We have the spicy rigatoni pasta. It's rigatoni pasta, cherry tomatoes, parm, fresh basil, pancetta with a spicy vodka sauce. Just waiting. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, it really, it's going directly to, to the tear ducts. Oh my gosh, but I can't like, when I breathe it hurts more. It's so creamy and smooth and very rich, but there is this very particular spice that is like soaking up my, it's in my eye. You keep wanting to go back because you're like, it's actually not that spicy. So you keep going back for another bite and then you're like, oh, oh no, nope, it was, it was. It's tolerable. It, I think that if you absolutely love spicy things, you're gonna be like, this isn't even that spicy. But for me, I, I can handle like medium level things. So for me, this is, this is hitting the right spot. Up next is the pineapple mezcal. It is tequila, mezcal, fresh pineapple, lime, and agave. Very simple. I love when they have this like salted rim, a little bit of like a salty spiced rim. Ooh, this is beautiful. It tastes like a 72 year old man on vacation in Mexico. It's like a very smoky old man who wears extra aftershaves. You know, like the kind of aftershave or cologne where like it, the smell just permeates your nose and doesn't leave. And you're just like, you keep sitting there and you're like, it's gonna go away. Like I'm, I'm gonna get nose blind to it. You won't, you can't. This is adding gray hair to me uh, as yeah. I drink it. We're ordering something from their Skinny Licious menu, which is basically just lower calorie options. This is the spicy shrimp pasta. It's rigatoni with sauteed shrimp, tomato, basil, garlic, and a spicy tomato sauce. Ooh, okay. We were noticing these shrimp are like curled like a cavatappi noodle. Yeah, like look at this piece of, do you see the curls? Yeah. There's definitely a reason. I'm sure everyone out on YouTube knows why. Please educate me, thank you. Let's go. It's almost like you did a pinch of red pepper flakes in the entire bowl. So it's not too potent for you. Between these two, this one is a thousand more calories than this one. Whenever I get things from like the lower calorie menu, I'm worried that the flavor is gonna be sacrificed. And that is not true for this. There's a really lovely freshness to this because of the basil, because of the sauce in here. And you're getting a lot of sauce. And also you're getting pasta, like <laughs> pasta on a healthy menu. Healthy menu. I wonder if it ruins it for everyone that I don't memorize these anymore. I'm sorry. I used to try to memorize it all. And then I was like, I'm gonna say this on camera and then it's gonna get cut. But I literally don't get paid a cent for these. So I'm not gonna memorize. This is a very small mini fun fact. Ready? Fun fact. The NASDAQ name, you know, like when something's getting publicly traded, the name for Cheesecake Factory, when you see it on the big screen is CAKE, in all caps, CAKE. 
That's my fun fact. <laughs> it's like you call them up and you're like, can I get like three shares of cake, please? Thank you. We have Bicaccio e Pepe Pasta. It is our not so traditional recipe with spaghetti, Romano and Parm cheese, arugula, and lots of freshly ground black pepper. And there it is again. Remember how I was saying that the owner of this restaurant, founder, David, Whenever he was adding in different menu items that you would that were like the super popular thing, people have been freaking out about Cacio e Pepe a lot on you know social medias. So they added it to the menu here, but they tried to make sure that they did their own riff on it. So there's arugula in here, there's some peppers. I'm interested to see what else makes it like not so traditional. They gave me a spoon to do the proper way of doing the pasta thing, but I don't know how to do that. So here we are. <laughs> I really like that they did this super thin spaghetti with it. It almost is angel hair like, so it's super light and it really like catches the sauce. I'm really enjoying this. I'm glad that they added the arugula to it because it, cacio e pepe for me gets a pretty bland pretty quickly. There's just not that much going on. So adding just a little bit of extra texture is much appreciated. Oh God, I think I finished the drink. Did you? Whew. All of these needed so many palate cleansers because there were so many competing flavors. I kept just going back to drink it. Okay, if you are a creamy girl, you're gonna go for the Cacio e Pepe. If you're a spicy girl, you're gonna go for the Rigatoni. If you are confused about the two, just get both and split it and then take the rest home. That's my official description or my official recommendation to you. <laughs> get my old man drink as well. Oh dear. I'm not driving home. No. Mm -hmm. Ready for a final, final round of our final episode? No. It's weird. It's very weird. It's very weird. All right, let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Passion and glory. I wait to break free. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Okay. In the final round of final rounds of final rounds, we are in the cheesecake round. Honestly, cheesecake is one of our favorite desserts that we have together. So I'm really happy that this is, we're ending things. A bitter, sweet ending. First thing we're gonna try, the Lowlicious Cheesecake with Strawberries. So this is something that's on the like lower calorie end of the spectrum. This is low carb, no sugar added, and gluten free with fresh strawberries. When I took my fork and went straight down into this cheesecake, it just went straight through, no problems. It was just the creamiest, smoothest bite shot we've ever had to do. I don't want to say it's super light because obviously it would be light. It's a low, licious cheesecake. You know how Diet Coke and different diet products, they kind of have like the aspartame, little bit of diet flavor in them. I was worried that that's what this was going to have as well, but it almost just tastes more like a pure cream cheese cheesecake. It's just extremely light, extremely creamy, I wouldn't say necessarily super fluffy either though. It's like a compact cheesecake. We have their classic Basque cheesecake. It is a super creamy cheesecake with a delicious and uniquely burnt top covered with fresh berries. We have a recipe for this on our website where it's just like this extremely burnt top and it usually isn't super smooth. It has like a few cracks here and there. It's like very rustic cheesecake. I love how fruity this one is. It's so. <gasps> oh my gosh, doesn't this look like pound cake from the side? Like it almost doesn't even look like cheesecake. Mm. <laughs> it also is chasing it like pound cake because I said that. Maybe it's because it's burnt, like it has that burnt, like um, creme brulee type flavor to it, but it tastes almost, because I said pound cake, it's now in my head that tastes like pound cake. I also really like this one because it's not overtly sweet. It does have like another flavor going on that's not just like sweet on top of sweet on top of sweet. We're gonna switch it up and do a little mouth break. What's that called, a palate cleanser? We have the espresso martini, which has vodka, espresso liqueur, frangelico, and then it has some signature cold brew coffee in here. Bring me back to life. Oh, it just smells like coffee. That was a big sip. Big, bold, robust, sharp almost. I'm gonna be so energized in the car back. I'm so sorry for you. I'm about to be like, <laughs> He finished! Ooh, okay. Here I think this deserves a little slow-mo moment, don't you? 
I guess not. I don't know. Fine, 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 fine. Work a little bit harder. Give it everything you've got. Embrace your dream. You just gotta believe. What in the world did I just put in my mouth? Is that just Snickers? That's supposed to be, okay, yeah. I was like, I just ate a Snickers bar. Oh my gosh. You know when you eat a Snickers bar and you get all the caramel and um, the nuts stuck on your teeth? All stuck in there, wow. We didn't even introduce the cheesecake, wait. <laughs> Rewind. We have the chocolate caramelicious cheesecake made with Snickers. It's an original cheesecake swirled with Snickers on a brownie crust with chocolate, caramel, and peanuts. There are hunks of peanuts in here, loaded with caramel, actual pieces of snicker on the top of here. That's illegal. It makes you talk slower, because <laughs> it's all stuck to your mouth. We have the guava sparkler. It's guava and pineapple with a splash of citrus. It's so beautiful. As you can tell from the description, there's no alcohol in this one. It's just a really fun, fruity drink to have at the end of your meal, or at the beginning. I'm not gonna shame you. Ooh, that is really fun to have. I'm not even missing any alcohol in here. That's just delightful and fun. We're on our last thing. Before we do our last cheesecake, I wanna talk about your favorite things that you've taken away from this whole journey. I did have Julia tries fun facts in here. We shot our first episode in May of 2018, I believe. Went live in June of 2018. First video ever was 12 minutes with 40 items. And then we've shot 62 episodes total, including this one together. <gasps> 62 episodes. Wow. So let's say we did 30 at each place. 62 times 30. We've tried po possibly 1,860 menu items at over 30 restaurants. Wow. Isn't that lovely? That's wild. And I know a lot of people, you guys have been asking like, do somewhere else, keep going. I'm like, oh God, I'm burping as I'm explaining myself. <laughs> so sorry. There's really not many places left. And you know, your girl's getting old, getting decrepit. Gotta wheel me out of here, gotta go. <laughs> it doesn't really feel like an ending at all. It won't really hit until this episode's probably actually out. And then maybe I'll be like, oh, wow. What's that? It's so cheesy. It's from like The Office with Michael Scott where he says, he's like, you don't realize you were in the good, good old days. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. Oh, yeah. Oh, stop. No, you're going to make me, you know? you're gonna make me cry. No, <laughs> like you don't it. realize like... you're in the good old days until like you're out of it and then you think about it. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> it's fine. I said we're not crying today. I'm not crying. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> if I cry in a cheesecake factory, goddamn it, you'd be so pissed. <laughs> we're on our final item. Mm -hmm. All right, last time reading these things. <laughs> we have the coconut cream pie cheesecake. It is a coconut cheesecake, vanilla custard, and a layer of chocolate all on a coconut macaroon crust. Everyone who is, who's here working with us behind the scenes was telling us this is their favorite cheesecake that we're trying today. They couldn't stop raving about the crust. I made a very large bite and I don't think I can commit to this, but last bite. Wait, is the last bite a slow-mo? You can do it, fine. Coconut flaky thing almost went up my nose. I think I breathed while eating and it went and I was like, if that gets stuck up there, that's gonna be a problem. I don't wanna explain that to the doctor. I think this is the most unique one. Well, yeah. it's hard because I think Basque cheesecake is unique and the way that it's made is very different than any of the other cheesecakes. But I do think that this one just has something a little bit more unique about it. And for me, it tastes like Easter. But for you, it tastes like uh, Passover. It has something nostalgic for everyone, kind of. Where the rest of these are just kind of like, yeah, these are amazing. <laughs> but this one is does have something really special to it. I'm glad I'm ending on that one. I am going to say, however, for me personally, this Bass cheesecake is really going to be where my heart is because it isn't as sweet, and I really do love the tartness of it. 
I'm a tart girl. Like, again, one of my favorite desserts is key lime pie. So for me, this is something that I'm going to gravitate towards and would have for any holiday function. I would serve this to at other people's weddings. Like I would show up and be like, I brought your wedding cake, it's this. And then just like cart theirs off to the side. Be like, no, 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 honey. That, that cake, it's dry. This, not. You're having this for your wedding. You're welcome. Yeah, this is the final episode. I usually say at the end of every episode, um, let me know where you want me to go next. But I'm super excited to tell you, don't f tell me where to go next. Don't tell me anything. I don't want to hear anything from you. Just kidding. <laughs> That's so mean. Tell us what series you want to see. Um, what do you feel like you're missing that you really want to see on our channel? But we're going to go on lots more adventures together. So yeah. There's there's, it's not come. the last you're going to see of us. That's yeah. for sure. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, we're still going to be here. You're just not going to see my face quite as often on screen. And again, none of you guys stay till the end, so I don't even know why I bother. But we pack up the leftovers. <laughs> we're taking them home. Thank you all for sticking around. Um, sticking around for when I was really bad at this and just annoying. And I like I actually rewatched the first episode. I'm like, Jesus Christ, how do you guys even watch my shit? And you know what? I proved all those haters wrong. Everyone who said that I wouldn't be able to do it, look at me now. And then sticking around during COVID when things were just really wild. I was shooting on my cell phone in my apartment and those videos were god awful. The audio quality was a <laughs> nightmare. Chelsea was like, you have to stop. I would add alcohol to this. Since I am home, I'm gonna put a little Jameson in it. It's been quite a journey and I, I could imagine doing it with anyone else. Yes. Thank you all for your support and for watching. Stick around because there's going to be so many more things on the Delish YouTube page. This is not the end in any way. We have a lot of fun stuff coming. You're gonna be hearing from Chels. She, it, unfortunately, we're all gonna. <laughs> <laughs> and I really couldn't do it without a better camera person than Chels. Thank you. I don't even wanna say see you later, but I find it's not goodbye, see you later, et cetera, et cetera. We'll be all okay. Life moves on. This is simply a chain restaurant review show. Life goes on. We're all gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Right? Right. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs>